Welcome to the Rediscovery channel. This is the channel where every week I, Ivor Kovac, and my good friend Stilgar take turns coming up with a topic from history that the other person doesn't know about and usually hasn't heard about either. So today it's my turn, and I've got to ask uh, Stilgar, have you heard of the Olmecs? The Olmecs? Huh? No. What, what is that? that so... Did, would you care to guess, like, what part of the world the Olmec civilization was in? Oh, so it's a civilization? Yeah. How do you spell it? No, if I tell you how to spell it, you can just look it up. Okay. O <laughs> no, I won't look it up. I promise. I won't. I, it's, is it? O-L-M-E-C. Yeah. Olmec. O-L-M-E-C. Olmec. That sounds mm -hmm. like it's, like, uh, South uh, American or something, or... Mid American, Central. yeah, it's yeah, it's Mesoamerican culture, you know, which is refers to Central American, uh, Central American region. Okay. We call those people Mesoamerican uh, cultures. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the Aztecs before, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is a forerunner civilization. This was the first, the oldest, and the first Mesoamerican civilization. Possibly the first American civilization altogether. And uh, just to be clear, you know, the term civilization, it actually means something. Like, in order to qualify as a civilization, you have to have um, living in cities, for one, you know, sedentary lifestyle. You have to have a surplus of agriculture. You have to have social stratification, specialization of labor and a written language. So every single civilization has a written language. You cannot have civilization without, because you know, just to build like a, a, a city and plan it out, you have to write those plans down. You also have to keep records, especially if you have a food surplus. So like, it, you know, when you have a food surplus, you can have people doing other things besides growing food. And a lot of people, they use the term civilized in a, in a wrong way. Like some people will, will say, um, you know, that, uh, they'll, that any culture is a civilization and they'll use like culture and civilization as synonyms when in fact that's not the case. Mm, uh, yeah. Because you, you have plenty of cultures that are not civilized, you know, like nomadic tribal societies and hunter gatherers, things like that. Um, and then some people use it to indicate like, you know, behaving in a way that's nice. Like, oh, oh, that's civilized behavior. That's not civilized behavior. But, like, that doesn't have anything to do with it either. Like, the uh, Assyrians were some of the meanest people in the world, and there is still civilization and a complex one. Yeah. So, and also you, being... You, you know how I knew it was... Um, sorry. You know how no, I no. knew it was from Central America or South America, I said initially. Um, yeah. Because of a game called Spelunky. What? <laughs> yeah, and the, the the final boss is a giant head that tries to crush crush you, and his name is Olmec. Olmec. So, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. actually, that's uh, that is relevant. So. Um, yeah, anyways. I'm looking at pictures now of the uh, the Olmec heads, but you'll probably get to that later. They look cool as uh, all get out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will come to that, actually. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, so the the Olmec, so, so the thing about uh, these civilizations in this, like the civilizations in this part of the world, the native civilizations, is in my view, it's the closest you can get to seeing how an actual extraterrestrial culture might be because they were completely isolated from the old world for so long that everything is kind of um, unique. And they also followed, like they met the qualifications of civilization, but they followed a different logic than we did. Like for example, they did have metalworking, but they mainly would use it to work uh, gold and make jewelry and nice things. But for some reason it never occurred to them to work iron, which you know was ultimately ended up being their downfall. But Anyways, uh, Olmec, and, and no, I'm not saying, you know, if anybody's listening, I think all that ancient alien stuff is stupid. I'm not saying that uh, any of these people are aliens, and I don't think that either. But uh, 
moving along. So the Olmecs are considered to be the mother of Mesoamerican civilization. They're the first. Um, and there, you can think of their relationship to these other groups as being similar to that of the Sumerians and the other Middle Eastern civilizations that would follow later on. Um, so they, their realm primarily existed uh, in the modern, today it would be the Mexican states of uh, Veracruz and Tabasco as where their main sites are, but there's lots of other sites where Olmec artifacts can be found beyond that. Um, and they're believed to be the originators of the Mesoamerican artistic and architectural styles. So the civilizations, like some of the civilizations they include, uh, sorry, some of the civilizations they influence uh, include the Mayans, Zapotec, Totonac, Teotihuacan, Toltec, and of course the Aztec. And the Aztecs are actually uh, late, relatively speaking, they were late comers. As far as Mesoamerican civilizations go, they actually wandered in from elsewhere. But, you know, they, they had adapted or adopted some of the culture that was already there. You know, it influences their architecture, for one, and their, their art style. So uh, San Lorenzo and La Venta are the most important archaeological sites for the Olmecs. Uh, San Lorenzo was supposedly originally their capital city and it they also believe it's the first city period in central america like the first city that was built and it did it was also the first city in the in the western hemisphere to have a drainage system you know coming out of uh, to coming out of the city so san lorenzo is the original capital and then at some point in time they move it on to la venta and the thing about San Lorenzo is originally it was an island in a river and they had a, a bridge, which I believe is still there, a stone bridge going across uh, one side of the river to the island. But over time, things have changed and now the river only flows around one side of the city. And the Olmecs are considered to be a pristine civilization. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the sources I was looking at uh, that told me this, said there's only six actual pristine civilizations in the world. And uh, what that means is that it's a culture that appeared uh, without influence from anybody else or any evidence of migration. Kind of like the Indus Valley culture, you know, which doesn't have any preceding culture um, or external kind of influence, but just appears there fully formed. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, like when we were talking about the Indus Valley, uh, we don't know what those people called themselves. And similarly, we don't know what the Olmecs called themselves. We don't even know what language um, the Olmecs spoke. So, hmm. um, is there any any writing or there is actually or stuff like that? Okay. Yeah, they found a stone tablet that has writing on it. I think they found some other things too, um, but. but there's no Greek uh, translation. <laughs> no, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, it's uncertain what language these people actually spoke. Mm. Um, but there, there's some clues. But um, well, anyway, I, I'll come to that. So uh, they're, they're considered to be a pristine civilization. Um, and I've seen a few different time frames given for when they existed. Like, uh, and these are all BC, mind you. So I've seen like uh, one source, you know, says 1600, sorry, uh, 1600 to 350 BC, 1200 to 500, 1200 to 400, according to Wikipedia, 1400 to 400 BC. So in other words, nobody really knows exactly um, when these people got started. But I do believe that they were the first. Um, you know, the first advanced culture that was there. And probably the, that's why so many people copycatted them afterwards. So the name that, they, that we refer to them by, Olmec, it actually comes from the Aztec word for these people. So the Aztecs called them Omecatal, Omecatl, 
which uh, means, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but uh, inhabitants of the rubber country, or more simply, the rubber people. And that's significant because um, they are the ones who probably invented rubber, or at least they were the first people to use it. Uh, and they came up with a, a sports game using rubber balls. Uh, whether or not, you know, like the Mesoamericans and even some of the other Native Americans, like the people indigenous to North America, they had some pretty violent sports, like, uh, you know, um, so, but it's unknown, like, how violent the Olmecs were. Uh, some people, you know, it's, it's still being debated. A lot of what we know about these people is not really, it, it's conjecture, which I guess that wouldn't really be knowledge. It would be more theories. But um, it's unknown, like, for example, whether or not they had books, because other, as, uh, other uh, Mesoamerican civilizations did, like the Aztecs. But of course, you know, they were the first one. So if they had any books, it would have turned to dust, you know, a long time later. Yeah. It's a tropical climate, so stuff, stuff doesn't last that well. There's, a, mm -hmm. there's a, a fair bit of Olmec artifacts, but it's all... Uh, Stuff that's made out of stone. Not all, but most. It's and gold, stone. I imagine. But then again, if people find gold, they probably melt it. Yeah, I'm not sure if the if any gold artifacts have been found with the Olmecs. I didn't come across anything in my research. But they did mm -hmm. use, they did have gemstones and other things. Um, so like I, I mentioned, they did, uh, they did have a system of writing. It hasn't been deciphered. Not many samples of their their writing has been found, uh, but there's this thing called the Cascajal block, which has 62 uh, symbols or characters on it. And uh, the Cascajal block has yet to be deciphered. As far as I know, it, it, it has not been. Yeah. And that thing weighs about 25 pounds. Now, there's another language called that they refer to as Epi-Olmec, the Epi-Olmec text which was uh, found on another block of stone um, in La Mojara in 1986. And this one contains uh, syllabic glyphs where each uh, um, symbol corresponds to a syllable, not a, not a particular letter or a complete word, but just a syllable. And it, it may or may not be related to the Olmec written language. They call it Epi-Olmec because they found it in an area that the Olmec uh, culture used to exist, but um, it was found supposedly dated to a time after the Olmec's civilization had fallen. Uh, and, and that was a four-ton basalt slab where this Epi-Olmec text is found. And it has been translated. They translated it by cross-referencing symbols with other cultures like the mayans mm -hmm. uh, and then that was translated in 1993 and it looks like it refers to battles um okay and and rituals i actually i i found a the actual scientific article the publication where they talk about their methodology and everything but i didn't have time to read it all but i can put it in the uh i can put it in the description the notes yeah yeah, that's cool. So they they use other um, non-related languages to decipher this. That's kind of like Star Trek or sci-fi-ish, where you uh, use non-related languages and you start picking up. Uh, interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, yeah. And I do think that, like, again, like getting back to the whole thing of aliens. You know, if there's, it's an example of how different cultures, when they they follow, they have their own kind of logic. Like uh, it seems like culture is an outgrowth outgrowth of thought process and logic. And you know, these people built all the Mesoamerican cultures, civilizations. Anyways, they built these incredible monuments with all these detailed carvings and everything, but they're using stone to carve stone. And it seems like it would be so much easier to just use the other metals. I mean, they used gold. And like, why not? 
But if you were to go to yeah, another but gold, planet, uh, gold probably wouldn't help with uh, cutting stone. Right, it wouldn't. Yeah. But there's other metals they could have used, but they didn't. You know, yeah, no, for sure. That's like a, one of the first things you learn playing Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually got a video game reference too um, for this. That's kind of, uh, but so yeah, it, it's interesting, right? Because um, if you were to go to another planet then who knows what kind of technology, like you might have somebody that uh, never occurred to use, um, like it, it never occurred to these guys to have wheels either. So you might have a culture that never used cars, but maybe they have airplanes or something like that. You never know. Um, but at any rate, the, the artifacts, the type of artifacts that they found from the Olmecs. They didn't have, they didn't have wheels because they had UFOs. Yeah. Yeah, artificial gravity you don't need wheels anymore <laughs> right yeah. yeah i mean that, but that's like if you're writing something about alien cultures they don't need to necessarily follow the the kind of development and the logic that you're familiar with you know so you could have yeah, some... i mean a lot of stuff discoveries are like pure purely found by coincidence so you know and, uh, if that hasn't it hasn't happened then it hasn't happened and a it lot makes, of stuff like, is borrowed too. From yeah. Uncle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And these guys didn't have anybody to borrow from, so yeah. they produced some very original-looking stuff. Um, and and the kind of artifacts they found. So it's like I said before, it's mostly stuff that's uh, stone. Um, they found artifacts in many sites in Mexico and some of those other countries that are further to the south. Uh, and actually, the Olmec realm, it did grow, and it ran across uh, the borders of quite a few of the countries that would exist later, mostly clinging to the coast, however. Uh, and, but then their artifacts are found even further abroad because of trade networks, and that's probably also how they spread their culture and came to influence others. Um, so the artifacts include jade masks. So you can actually kind of see what kind of facial features these people had because they, they, they did make a good record of that. Um, figurines of something called greenstone, which I'm not really sure what it what that was. Ceramic. Also, there's a lot of pottery, but there's ceramic uh, figurines. Basalt, like small basalt statues and such, and quartz. Now, there, there's also been some wood uh, sculptures found at the El Manati site. Uh, but for the most part, it's stone. That doesn't mean they didn't have other stuff. It just, you know, other stuff would have rotted in that tropical climate. I was really surprised to find that there was any wood left at all. And then there's the massive stone heads like you talked about. And 17 of those have been found so far. They're made out of basalt. And they weigh anywhere from 20 to 40 tons each. And they, they each have distinct facial features so uh, I mean they have the same kind of similar kind of phenotype but each face looks like a different person and they all appear to be wearing some kind of headgear which uh, was probably a helmet um, and, uh, and and there's a reason for that uh, so their their hats that they wore in this culture like I'll, I'll say briefly about their their type of uh, clothing uh, they wore big, it looks like big elaborate hats uh, of widely varying shape and uh, clothing left most of their bodies uncovered from what I've seen in the carvings and such. And uh, anybody who who uh, played or has played ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, there's a, a dungeon there called uh, Ruins of Mazatun and the sets that they drop in there look a lot like the kind of stuff that the Olmecs used to wear. So, I mean, it's like bands around the wrists and something around the neck. And this kind of short thing around the waist that covered. And most of the jewelry that they had was like gemstones, not so much gold. Although it could have, maybe they did have some gold, but it got looted. It probably would have gotten looted. Any gold they had probably would have disappeared before the Spanish even came because the other cultures would have would have picked that up. Uh, and and some of the innovations 
of the Olmecs, so they were supposedly the first to practice medicinal bloodletting. Not like ritual, but, you know, bleeding someone to get rid of the disease. Uh, how, they, did, how, did it, how did they know that? I don't, I think they know that from images that were carved in stone. Mm. That doesn't mean they were the first. Yeah, carved in stone, but you can't read a record of it. It's just... Yeah, well, how much is that like? Maybe they're like sacrificing them to the gods or something. So we don't know uh, uh, whether it's disputed whether or not they uh, performed human sacrifices. There's no clear evidence of it. There's no clear they evidence. Didn't. Okay, yeah, they probably would have found some bones. Yeah, they also didn't have really big, huge temples like the Aztecs and would have these big, huge pyramids. They would sacrifice people on top of those. Um, the Olmecs, they did have some pyramids, but they were not used for sacrifice. It was, uh, I think they were actually used for burial. Um, and most of their stepped pyramids were made out of dirt. I found one structure that's a stone structure, and it looks kind of like a, you know, a, a stepped or a tiered pyramid. But there's not really a, uh, it looks like it might be hollow on the inside, like an actual building at, I'll put a picture of that in the um, the slideshow. Isn't so they, it interesting that you find these pyramid shapes all across the world? Yes. Um, that's one thing I've noticed is that in a lot of the world's oldest cultures, like the very the very first, you have it in the Middle East, like Sum the Sumerians, they built the ziggurats. And then the yeah, Egyptians. There's, there's even some in Europe. I think there's one in Germany as well. Oh, East. really? Yeah. Oh, that I didn't know. Hmm. There's, um, yeah, it's, you know, and the, the, what do you call them, the Guanches? They built one, uh, the Egyptians did, and the Mesoamericans, they did as well. So um, it's also thought that the Olmecs were the first people to create chocolate because they did eat it. Um, so maybe they were the first ones, the ones that figured out how to make it. And they came up with the concept of zero, they had a functioning calendar based on scientific calculations. And what I heard is that the Mayans actually ripped off their calendar from the Olmecs. And in terms of geography, the Olmec culture was between what would later become the Mayan realm and the Aztec realm. It's right, right in the middle of them. Um, and the, the Olmecs recognized that there were 356 days in a year. And they also made aqueducts, though I don't think very many. The, their aqueducts were made by uh, uh, laying out blocks of basalt, identical blocks, and there was a channel cut through them that would bring the water. Uh, so that's that's kind of interesting, you know, way before the Romans. And their the stuff they used to eat, uh, maize, by that I mean corn, like uh, beans, squash, sweet potatoes, and something called manioc, which I'm not sure what that is. Uh, and then the meat that they had probably came from fishing and hunting. Uh, I don't know if they had domesticated animals or not. You know, again, it, it comes down to the fact that there, there's no written text. I mean, there is written text, but it hasn't been deciphered. So most of what we know about these people is like where the artifacts were found and what other cultures have to say about them. And their religion is also a matter of, uh, matter of uh, theory, uh, speculation. That's the word I was looking for, speculation. So nobody knows really what religion they had, like what their religion was. It's unknown if they performed human sacrifices. That's a debate that's going on. Uh, they're thought to be polytheistic and dynastic with the rulers being linked to the gods, which kind of sounds like the pharaohs to me yeah but again mm. like uh, i don't know how sure they can be of that and then toads alligators and jaguars were thought to be sacred and they had a lot of creatures like uh mythical beings where you'd have the head of one creature on the body of another and there's this guy uh his name is peter joralamon he's an archaeologist Supposedly, he has identified eight gods 
or you know some kind of sacred beings. And what he called them here is uh, the Olmec dragon, bird monster, fish monster, banded eye god, water god, maze god, wear jaguar, feathered serpent. Uh, and he says that some of these gods um, would be venerated by other Mesoamerican cultures. Like the, the Mayans and Aztecs, they both had feathered serpents, serpent gods. But again, you know, it's, it's like if you find a stone with images carved on it and no explanations, how do you know whether it's a god or a monster? Yeah. Or like, you could probably make some estimated guesses, probably. Yeah, that's what you have to do because you don't have any context. Like, imagine. If, um, uh, you know, our cultures went extinct that we have today, but they left behind these artifacts, some aliens come along and they find, uh, let's say, Marvel comic books. How do they know if that's anything at all about that? Yeah. They, they get like an idea. Like some random that, statue at a shopping center. It's like, oh, this might be a god. It could, yeah, yeah it could be a yeah. god. It could be a mythological creature that someone believes in. It could be a story, a fictitious yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And and we don't know like what color any of this stuff is supposed to be. I know that uh, you know some cultures they used to paint a lot of the stone. You know, like the Romans, they used to paint everything. The people depict Rome as being all white stone. You know, back in the day, but that's actually not true. They painted stuff. They also painted the statues. Like the statue, yeah, the, uh, the the Parthenon was uh, painted as well in bright colors, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so, so this yeah. this stuff could have been painted too. I haven't heard that it was, but you know, again, it's like. Uh, then again, like you probably like it, it wasn't easy to make these big heads out of basalt, you know, especially yeah. given the tools they had. It probably meant something. It was something important, you think, unless they were like really bored. I don't think it was uh, Captain uh, America or anything like that. And they're like, oh. <laughs> well, yeah. I, yeah. Well, the, but the these things that they're saying are different gods. I don't know mm. that, you know, because like our ancestors, you know, during the medieval period, we were monotheists by then. But there's all sorts of artwork and imagery of animals, like anthropomorphic animals doing all kinds of things, you know. And yeah, that's true. I guess you that. Yeah. So, so if you if you don't have any context and you can't read the written text and you just find all these images, then oh well, this one here is reappearing is a recurring uh, image that appears like say fifty times. So that's probably something important, but you don't know whether that's a god or whether that's like a symbolic image for something, or mm. whether it's a kid's story or whether it's uh, you know some something that's supposed to be an evil force. You can't. It's hard to know that stuff. So you have to you have to fall onto a lot of uh, yeah. supposition. That's probably gods. But. Maybe yeah. I mean they probably were polytheistic, mm. but we don't know that. We don't know what these things were because there's no. We don't even know what they would have called them. Or it could be their alien overlords, of course. Who, yeah. Uh, instructed them to build the pyramids. Yeah. So th the stone heads supposedly what they think is that they were the representative of rulers and such, but. Um, and maybe they were a uh, warriors. I think probably warriors because it looks like the headgear that they have looks more like helmets. And the kind of civilian wear that they would wear these big, ridiculous, tall hats. I shouldn't say ridiculous. That's that's. Uh, but these big, huge, tall hats. Um, and I may try to. Yeah, years ago when I was in college, I actually studied the the relief carvings for a while to kind of try and extrapolate what these guys look like and i i did a drawing i may include it in the slideshow maybe not um but i even if you can figure out the pattern i still don't it's anybody's guess what colors these things were supposed to be um maybe they so, were wearing uh red lipstick and rouge no <laughs> no uh, probably not but yeah well and and they are, they are. They do look uh, really nice. Like, it, I mean, it's interesting. It's something I would put in my garden. Um, 
Well, that's, but the stone heads isn't the only thing they did. There's, there's a lot of smaller figurines, and there's mm. relief carvings, and there's yeah. some remains of buildings as well, which is amazing, you know, that anything like that is still around. Yeah. And then they, they actually... They must have, uh, I mean, they must have been pretty advanced to, to have the time to work on stuff like that. The food store plus yeah that's that's you can only achieve these kind of things if you have a big uh, one i imagine because otherwise yeah like how would you be able to do this like if you're if if you're a civilization on the brink of starvation you won't have uh you won't have an interest in doing any of these things yeah your civilization will break down and you'll become maybe you become barbarians just uh roaming around it's a bummer though that we don't have like a more texts available like we do with the egyptians for example um but yeah but yeah. even then like uh like what you mentioned like like the assyrians would they would just describe battles and you know it's that's all there is yeah i think period. these guys were not as brutal as the assyrians i mean most people weren't actually no um, i'm just saying it, it wasn't like homer or anything like that the stuff they would leave behind it's like it was very factual you know it's not well but, but then again maybe you they could have found a religious text or, anyway yeah, i digress yeah that's sorry. no that's yeah. a good point actually i think the reason we have i mean you think about the egyptian civilization and the greek civilization they lasted a very very long time and that's why the records are left of these people but something happened to the olmecs around like uh, 300 or 400 bc that destroyed them and uh or at least caused them to disperse or be taken over by other people so their particular even though they influenced all these other cultures their own culture did not really continue on and the two i've seen that now it's all speculation but i've seen different ideas like uh one is that the rivers that they lived near filled up with silt in such a way that uh, they changed courses, and people say that about the Indus Valley culture as well. And then volcanic activity uh, has also been uh, posited that maybe they had to move as a result of volcanic activity during the time. And there's, um, you know, I, and I want to briefly touch on some of the speculation because even though this is considered a uh, pristine culture, there's all sorts of people that are constantly trying to tie this to uh, some other part of the world. And uh, one of those is the, you know, the giant stone heads. They have these, these noses that are kind of wide and uh, flat. And also they have rather large lips. So a lot of people have said, well, they look like, uh, they look like sub-Saharan Africans. So maybe their civilization was started by black Africans. Um, and there, there are some theories that are going around about stuff like that. And, well, I think it is, I, I don't have any issue with saying that there could have been some uh, black African civilizations in the ancient world that engaged in exploration. Because there were some African civilizations that had, you know, met all the characteristics of civilization like the Ashanti but there's no need of that because these people they actually are a lot of people in Mexico that still have features like this today and uh, it is in their gene pool to kind of look like that you know they have a little bit of some of them look more like that and then there's other people that have uh, phenotypes that are more um, what would you say like uh, aquiline so who knows but my thinking is that um, not all of the Amerindian groups in this part of the world came over the land bridge. Like that's what they used to teach when I was a kid, that all these people came over the land bridge, including the Olmecs. But my thinking is that there were multiple waves of migration. Some people came over the land bridge. Some people came over the ocean. You know, like there's people, there's cultures that are much more, much more primitive than the, than Olmecs and certainly and other Mesoamerican civilizations but they live on islands in the Pacific so mm. they must have gotten there by boat even if they no longer make boats today it's the only way right yeah um, 
So I, I don't believe the, uh, the African theory. I think it's unnecessary uh, and without evidence. But the other interesting speculation I've seen is there might be some connection to India between the Olmecs and um, the civilization that's there. And when I was in college, I actually did a project where I looked at different parts of the world during the same time period and just wrote about the major civilizations that were, you know, in the world uh, during this time. And while I was reading all these books, I had somebody come by and I was reading these books about the Olmecs and they had all these pictures. And there's this guy from India that came by my uh, desk and he's like, what are you doing? And so I'm reading about uh, the Olmecs. He's like, oh, we have uh, we have artwork like this back home. We have gods that look like that. We have buildings that look like this. And I was like, huh. And so I uh, I showed it to a few more people, you know, that came recently from India. And some of them are like, yeah, it looks familiar. And others are like, no, that looks weird. But actually, if you compare um, the Mesoamerican architecture to the Dravidian architecture, you know, the Dravidians, that's like the original inhabitants of India. Um, it, and their architecture is a bit different. It's actually today, it's very elaborate. You can look at it and they, and they paint the outside of it. But the shapes of uh, the temples and the style of artwork is is kind of similar. It looks like it came. They both started from a uh, similar kind of principle. And I found this guy just recently. His name is uh, Bibu Dev Misra. He's a blogger and I guess uh, some kind of research scientist. But basically, he visited uh, the Olmecs, the, uh, the Olmec Museum, or one of the Olmec museums that's down there in Mexico. And he said, he looked at a lot of the smaller figurines, like he found the art, the larger artwork to be similar. He said, you know, some of the stuff looks like it's, uh, resembles Indian stuff. But then he found that um, a lot of the poses that the statues were making were like different poses that you make for, for yoga. So he identified 12 yoga asanas and to me, that's a new word as I was reading his article, but it, it, I guess it has to do with um, the, the position that you're in. And then two yoga mudras, which is like these hand gestures. And he took and put pictures of these yoga poses next to these statues. And I'll, I'll include it in the slideshow. So he's thinking, you know, that maybe uh, Indians had something to do with this civilization. And... Um, I think if that's the case, it wouldn't have been Hindus, it would have been Dravidians. Like, you know, the Indus Valley culture, for example, was not a Hindu culture. It was the people that were there first and they got stomped down on. But, it, but you know, if you look at like um, the uh, genetic map, like the Y chromosome map, the haplogroups are not the same. Uh, and I don't know about I would guess the mitochondrial DNA is not the same. And I would also assume that uh, the autosomal DNA is different as well. Ah. So the Dravidian Y uh, haplogroup is H. And then the Mesoamericans, they have different haplogroup. It is called Q. I think Q haplogroup. So yeah, I'll put it in the side of the slideshow, but it looks like a different... Uh, it looks like there's not a genetic relationship. Of course, if you go, you know, far enough back in time, then at some point, you, all of humanity was like one, uh, living together in one area. So yeah. it, it, and it's a matter of it, the, the reason we have all these different cultures and also different, uh, different genetic groups is represents like different stages of breakup as people diverge from each other. So it, I don't think that, uh, I wouldn't say that uh, Indians or uh, founded the Olmec culture or any other old world culture that exists, but I would say that probably they broke off, it could be that they broke off from a common source, so mm. they could have some of the same kind of ancient 
logic and root culture that's there. But yeah, I'll put all this stuff in the slideshow and uh, people can form their own opinions on it. Uh, what we do know is that these guys were the first that was there, the first civilization. And they could be that, you know, they're, um, they and the, the Dravidians and the Sumerians, you know, and the Egyptians, they may have had some similar architectural principles from the very beginning, which could be why you see this shape appearing like the pyramid over and over and over again. Yeah, so, maybe they were connected somehow. Yeah. And if they were, if those poses in the figurines really are yoga poses, then what that would mean is that yoga existed before Hinduism existed. Because, like, if the. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, like, what, what if yoga just is like certain movements that feel good and they help you relax and uh, I don't like you know cultures like even if it's in pure isolation uh, they might come up with similar forms of music or dance or other forms of art like the pyramids and you know maybe to some degree yoga is an art form as well and they came up with a similar way all by themselves that's also yeah. a possibility they could have taken separate routes to arrive at uh, similar practices. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, maybe I, while I they were to... after they were playing with their rubber balls, uh, they uh, <laughs> they liked to re relax on their rubber yoga mats. I don't know, you know. Or That's maybe why they, they were, were called the, the rubber people was because they were so flexible. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but or maybe yeah. they were stretching out, you know, before the games so yeah. they don't stitch. Yeah, and I think there's probably, uh, I mean, I'm not a yoga guy because of all the hype, but there's probably a bunch of science behind uh, some of those movements. They, they definitely make you stronger, things like that, if you do them properly. So uh makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't know much about yoga. My wife, uh, she used to do it. Um, of course, like uh, this guy, uh, Misra, he puts an image from the Indus Valley civilization there too, where some of those, or at least one of those poses was there, those yoga poses in the Indus Valley civilization. And what that would mean though, is if yoga started with the Indus Valley culture, then it predates Hinduism because Hinduism occurs, you know, after the Vedic culture comes in and mingles with the Dravidian cultures that were already there. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's interesting, you know, and, and um, some of these very, very old cultures, like uh, you're, we were talking about in your uh, last video, how people were having all kinds of nasty stuff out in the streets, even during the 1800s. So in, in some ways, these old cultures were cleaner than like New York during the 1800s or Los Angeles today, because they had underground sewer sewers, like taking all this filth away. Um, well, I know the Indus Valley culture had underground sewers. The Olmecs, I think they just had, uh, they probably just had like gutters in the stone, but they did have a drainage system. So they were moving uh, runoff and filth out of their city. Yeah, although so, that was also, they had that, but it was open sewage and things like that. Anyway, but yeah, um, and they probably went extinct because of some kind of natural disaster, which you. He said, like, maybe the river changed or dried up or, you know, maybe there was like a volcanic eruption nearby or something like that. And they just yeah, I, actually, I, I could believe the, uh, you know, the volcanic eruption because like Pompeii and some other place, uh, was it Herculaneum? Like the, vo the volcanic vol volcanism will cause you to definitely abandon your town. Um, yeah. You, you, but the whole thing about rivers changing, and also they say rivers changing in Indus Valley culture, I think that's an inconvenience, but I also think you would just move, you know, if that happens, or, ir or you know, build a irrigation trench. So I'm, I'm thinking invasion. Uh, also, it could be that uh, there was a plague. Could be uh, a plague, you know. yeah. Could also be a plague of their food. 
like if they were growing a certain kind of crop and they were very very much relying on it and some kind of pest was introduced from a different part yeah like a blight yeah um i mean there's so many ways to go out especially if you're isolated as a people so they they weren't isolated they were definitely surrounded by others and uh maybe they yeah. were woke <laughs> That's well, what did them in. <laughs> yeah. And they found they couldn't make the statues anymore because it was offensive to <laughs> yeah. know how to make statues, don't have the skill. Yeah. yeah like, ah. Uh. Actually, uh, one of the sources I was looking at, they said that in the later times, um, they were, there's evidence that they were reusing existing uh, artwork. And, and like re repurposing and reusing existing materials rather than going out and getting new ones. So it may be that um, new groups were moving into the area. And it could also be like, uh, you know, one, one thing I've noticed throughout history is that if you have a more advanced civilization, then, then the less advanced people will always try to come in, either to come in and take your stuff and go or to come in and rule over you. Like that's yeah. why China had to build the wall, and that's why Maybe, the Romans uh, too. While they so, were busy building all these nice heads and jewelry, there were some other peoples that were making weapons and making children. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and, and children, yeah. We yeah. we like we don't have to trade with these people, and and also you know trading as extensively as they did then other cultures could have been like, huh, I wonder where this stuff is coming from. I wonder if yeah. we go there and we ransack it, we'll get a lot more. Yeah. Easier to take things than to make things, you know. All you need is enough people and you can go take it. So as soon as like the advanced civilization has a moment of weakness, then that's pretty much gonna be it for them because the others will come in and and ransack you. Yeah. Cool, yeah, man. So, never knew about these guys. Interesting story. Yeah, they're very, very important to the Mesoamericans. You can, you can, like, one way you can remember these guys is the Olmecs are to the Aztecs what the Sumerians were to the Babylonians. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for sharing uh, that story and uh, that part of history. I need to read more about Central America. History. Yeah, it's worth looking into. I want to do more videos about them. You know, I actually don't know as much about them as I do about like uh, Norse. They like they have their own mythology and stuff. Of course, we don't know what the Olmec mythology is, but we do know about Aztecs and Mayans. Yeah. And it's you should it's do something about them as well because I know very little about them. So, as a European, that's not really a focus area for us typically. So, but it should more, be right. Some of the old world. Yeah, because potatoes, you know, like you mentioned, the Irish potato famine in potatoes your last and year. corn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. How would Ireland have been without potatoes in the first place? Because that's one of the things that came over on the Colombian exchange, and yeah. also tomato apparently is an indigenous uh, New World crop. Comes from an Aztec word like tomato or something. Tomato, I think it is, and. Well, my wife, she massively cooks with tomatoes. And, but, you know, and I was thinking, I asked her, like, oh, I just found out tomato is a new world crop. How would your cooking be without tomatoes? Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, and uh, and it, it is the closest uh, to... Uh, how much huh? corn is being used? Or, uh, like, a lot of cattle and stuff is corn-fed. Yeah, uh, and Mexican cuisine is like uh, nine, somewhere around like 90% indigenous, you know? Mm -hmm. Like uh, all those things that they eat are mostly indigenous foods. However, they would have had something else instead of beef that they would be using yeah. back then. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because if you're, it, you know, in, in Mexican food, a tortilla is a flatbread similar to uh, rotis, like the Indian... Ver Indians have something similar called roti, which is a flatbread, but they but they use it differently. Um, yeah, but it looks the I, same. I know uh, roti because in Suriname, which used to be a colony of the Netherlands, they have roti as well. But in Spain, to a tor if you say I want a tortilla, you're you're going to get an omelet. It's the scrambled eggs. 
Ah. Okay. Yeah, Actually, Spanish that, food uh, is nothing like most people in the United States. No, it's very different. It's very different. I've been to uh, Spain, and there's also a difference, I think, between Mar Barcelona and Madrid, because in Barcelona, it's more the tapas, which is the small bites. Yeah. And in Madrid, it's more like the paella and stuff like that. Oh, I love paella, yeah. man. That stuff is so good. I, had, uh, I love uh, Tex-Mex. I had tortillas uh, for dinner tonight with guac and tomatoes, little little cut-up tomatoes with nice sauce on it. So that's a very indigenous uh, feast to uh, Central America. So, so, yeah, you should learn more about it. And, I and should. We should. We should ex explore that. Growing up, we didn't, we didn't have Tex-Mex in my country. It was mostly... Like, if you had foreign food, it was either pizza, maybe Greek, and then there was a lot of Indo-Chinese. Like, if you if you go to a Chinese place here, it's Indonesian Chinese food. So it's like a lot of Bobby, Bobby Pong, um, Fu Yong Hai. Uh, Fu Yong Hai, I think, is actually Chinese. You guys only have that because uh, Netherlands colonized Indonesia for a while. Yeah, and a lot of the Chinese people after... Uh, uh, it became independent. A lot of Chinese people left Indonesia and they came here, but they brought like their own mixed version of Chinese cooking, which has a lot of Indonesian influence. But yeah, no, cool story, not. dude. Yeah, Getting hungry I, now. I enjoyed it. And those heads are awesome. They're really cool. So yeah, I, those I, heads I, are awesome. Imagine some more, uh, some more artwork in the in the movie in the film. How video. many workers must have gotten squashed if one of those heads rolled over? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, and how they move the heads, right? Yeah. See, I, I think that, um, and I, I'm going to do a video on this sometime. Like, I, I don't believe that uh, aliens ever came to this world. No, but I, I do, like, the people, there is evidence, though, that the ancient world was much more advanced than modern people think it was. Not all, but in certain key places. It was like there's there's stuff that's been built in the ancient world and moved and carved that nobody knows how it was done. And yeah, we should do uh, maybe we should do an episode about some of the things where we don't really know how they build it. Yeah, we should, that might be a good one. So it, it, all right, all right, dude. Well, I appreciate it, and uh, I want to say like, share, and subscribe, and leave us a comment. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay, sorry.